How the Light Gets In is the Institute of Art and Ideas unique festival, combining days full of talks and debates in philosophy, politics, arts and science, with evenings full of music and dance. Get your tickets for the world's largest music and philosophy festival at howthelightgetsin.org. Well, our biggest challenge as a society is that millions of people have been taught what to think and hardly anybody has been taught how to think. And so far too many things are taken on trust and people get away with far too much in foreign and domestic policy and generally in public discourse. You can say fantastically stupid things and get away with it. Do you think that's down to political correctness? Um, no, it's not down. Uh, political correctness is a two-edged thing. Political correctness is, is popular and successful because a lot of it's simply about being, uh, being kind to people and having good manners, and no one's against that. Uh, and also it's a very complicated field in which the whole argument about, about diversity and equality get, gets quite difficult if you go into it. So no, what I fundamentally blame it on is the destruction of our state education system in the 1960s. Uh, you could used to be able to tell uh, before the House of Lords was, was flooded with cronies. If you went to the Houses of Parliament and attended a debate in the House of Commons, where most of the people were educated since the 1960s, and then went along the corridor to the House of Lords, where most of the people had been educated before the 1960s, you could see the difference instantly in the way they formed their sentences and the levels of knowledge they displayed. And it was a very good contrast. That's gone now, but it actually does illustrate it. There was a, a revolution in education at that time, and those who lived before it are totally distinct from those who came after it. And it wasn't just that the grammar schools were destroyed. The grammar schools kept all the other schools, including the private schools, honest. And once they were gone, the standards of everybody slipped. So do you think there's a, a credible solution being put forward? Or? No. I don't. I long ago gave up putting forward solutions to anything. I, I thought, well, I've written all these books saying this is what has gone wrong, and by implication, what you could do to put it right. And no one paid any attention at all. So I've now reached the conclusion that uh, we're all going to sink giggling into the sea at some point in the fairly near future, and there's nothing whatever you can do about it. Except if you're, if you're really worried, leave before it's too late. Um, do you think that's... I'm too old to leave. <laughs> Do you think that there's any chance of sort of resolving things? Or no, no, at all. No, for me, I just I, I, I was only making myself unhappy trying to do something about it. And as soon as I stopped trying to do anything about it, it was a great weight off my shoulders. It's not my responsibility anymore. So we've had a debate here at the festival with Stanley Fish talking about free speech, which I know that's something you've written on quite a lot as well. Yeah, I'm in um, favour of it. He's uh, actually saying that there is no such thing as free speech because all utterances exist within a particular framework. Nothing we say exists in a vacuum. So I wondered whether that was something you took umbrage with or whether you agreed with Well, it just seems to me, I don't know quite what the purpose is of saying that. Was he saying that so as to persuade people not to bother about threats to free speech? I, I'm not sure why he said it or what his purpose was. And there is obviously, there is free speech and there are restrictions on speech and they're, they're visible, uh, if not actually tangible, easily detectable and, uh, and, uh, and objectively can be determined. So I would just disagree completely with that. Do you think free speech sort of, to come back to what you were saying about education and people saying tacitly idiotic things, that free speech is now just being used as a shield to sort of have the, the freedom just to obviously to say these things without any consequence of being, being challenged uh, on I, the, 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 the freedom of speech is a freedom and it, like all freedoms it comes with responsibilities. The fact that you're free to say certain things say about the Prophet Muhammad or whatever it might be doesn't mean that you should necessarily say them. Uh, I think that people should be free to say the things that Charlie Hebdo said, but I think Charlie Hebdo shouldn't have said them uh, because I think it was just, it, there was no point in doing so and it, uh, it, 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 it achieved absolutely nothing of, of, of any use. But that, that, they're two different things. Uh, one is the believing that people should be free to say things. The other, once you are free, knowing how to use that freedom, that they're, 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 they're distinct. But what does happen uh, a lot is that people will use claims of being offended or insulted as reasons for shutting down freedom of speech, and that's completely illegitimate. Uh, freedom of speech is, is limited only, in my view, by the, the jurisprudence around the, the First Amendment of the US Constitution, and therefore the obvious cliche about not being able to shout fire in a crowded theater, about, uh, about not being able to incite violence. These are the limits on freedom of speech which a free society can accept and tolerate, but beyond that, people should be free to say what they like, and after that it's governed by morality. Well, I think it's wonderful to live in a society where it's still possible to discuss things. We haven't completely given it up. 
And every event of this kind is a good deal better than not having an event of this kind and should be applauded and encouraged. The problem is that the number of people who are interested in going to such things is severely limited and the number of people who can appreciate them is severely limited. Not because the people themselves were born unable to appreciate them, but because so many people simply are not being educated to the level where they would appreciate that sort of thing. And I actually think that it's been a real problem, particularly in my own area of, of, uh, of work, the media, uh, and in lots of other areas of the, of the privileged parts of our society, that we have, because we live ourselves quite pleasant lives where we can have reasonably civilized debates, we've neglected to do anything about making sure that that's available to as many people as possible. And, and that's been the great failure of our society, to fail to protect uh, and encourage the wider application of proper education and to keep this privilege to ourselves. The more of it the better and there would be more of it and people would buy more books and buy and read more newspapers and, and, and go and see more plays and good films if the education system were better. So everybody should be in favour of that. Yeah. Uh, one of the things obviously that we do is we try and bring together as broad a demographic as possible in terms of the speakers, so pairing of you know, politicians, journalists with scientists, philosophers, artists or so. Um, in terms of from your own experience and the debates that you'll have today, um, how do you see, you know, do you feel that this is an important thing and what's the value it's, in that? It's hugely important. One of, the most, one of the most enjoyable things any thinking person can do is enter into debate with others on the things that matter to him or her. And I, I don't think there's, there's anything both more educational or entertaining uh, or satisfying if it's done properly and people stick to the, the rules of facts and logic. Uh, there, were, there is one problem in a lot of modern debate, that people don't stick to those rules and they have no idea what they are. And what are you most looking forward to about today? Uh, having a, having a, uh, a um, brawl with Philip Collins. I love arguing with Blairites. Get your tickets for the world's largest music and philosophy festival at howthelightgetsin.org.